You don't understand, Doc. Oh. Oh. You don't understand at all. Some advantage to a sea voyage. Otherwise, I would have joined the Abra Airways. What are your intentions? You've had three months at sea to ponder. Well, I intend to leave my family as far behind as possible. I think you've managed that. Next. Well, I could learn Abyssinian. Or perfect my barefoot dancing. We both know why you're here. Darling, you can't bring Janie back. But I can't stop him doing it again. Premier Hogan is a regular guest of this establishment. Straight to the top, then. Miss Fisher? A luncheon today with Lydia Andrews. How lovely. Oh, and Aunt Prudence. Shame I have to perform an urgent bowel operation. Miss Franny Fisher to see Miss Lydia Andrews. She's expecting me. Sorry, Miss Fisher. The lunch has been cancelled due to a family tragedy. What kind of tragedy? Mr. Andrews passed away this morning. Oh, Friday. Here. I've missed you so badly. I'm so oh, sorry for you. Awful, this all is. It's all right. Oh, God. If there's anything I can do. He just collapsed. We, we thought it was his heart, but then the police had been here all morning. Poor darling man. Dee, we need Dee. Oh, Prudence. Friday. Dear. Ah, 
You would hardly recognize the child, didn't you? Apart from the length of your skirt. Whereas you haven't changed one jot, Aunt Prudence. Smooth passage. So far. Have you seen a doctor? You look terribly pale. I felt dreadful, even before John collapsed. As if I knew something was coming. Excuse me, madam. That detective wants to speak with you again. <sighs> so what on earth happened? Now, you know I'm not one to pry, but I couldn't help overhearing in the hallway. It seems that John collapsed suddenly after a light breakfast of tea and kumquat marmalade toast, and the maid found him purple in the face and cold to the touch on the bathroom floor. The police obviously suspect his death had a helping hand. I'm sorry. The inspector would like all visitors to leave so that he may question the household. Very well. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Yeah. Darling. Uh, excuse me, miss. You can't. Oh, I you just can't. need the powder right? I, no, I'm sorry, but my instructions are no one's to pass this point. I understand perfectly, though my bladder may not. I'll just, I'll, I'll just check with the inspector. Just. Be the inspector. Apologies for my urgent call of nature. This is the scene of a crime. Well, lucky for you, I'm wearing gloves. Miss Franny Fisher. I assume you weren't close to the deceased. Never had the pleasure, but by all accounts, he was charming. Do you think it was poison? Most likely. We are yet chef. to determine the cause of death. Miss Fisher, I appreciate your. Curiosity for crime. Well, every lady needs a hobby. But please. Given the lack of bloodstains, I assume it wasn't a violent death, unless, of course, it was strangulation. But the fetal position of the victim outline, although not terribly well executed, indicates a degree of pain rather than the flailing limbs one might associate with a struggle. And then, of course, there's the fact that death occurred after breakfast, according to Mrs. Andrews, which suggests something ingested. Or wild surmise, of course. Of course. Yeah. Do you have a card? In case I need to call the police. Because I'm a woman alone, newly arrived in a dangerous town. I plan to make this town less dangerous, Miss Fisher. Good. I do like a man with a plan. Detective Inspector Jack Robinson. Where do you live, sweetheart? 
Hey, Waggy Waggy. Wake up, love. Oh, no, Bert. She's bleeding all over me, bleeding up all three. I can help with the funeral arrangements. Oh, thank you. I can highly recommend the people who laid out Edward. Lydia. Sasha. I, I heard the terrible news. Oh, apologies, Mrs. Stanley. My manners will they have deserted me. Oh, it's quite all right, Sasha. We're all distraught. May I present my niece, the Honorable Miss Fisher? Pleased to meet you. Enchanté. My God, the soiree. Oh, Lydia has planned a charity soiree for tomorrow evening. Mm. Uh, Sasha is engaged to dance for us. Oh, yes, but now I... No, everything yeah. must be cancelled, of course. If only the hospital committee weren't absolutely depending on it. Tell them Lydia's just been widowed. If only she weren't so good at raising thousands of pounds. And goodness knows how we're to contact the guest list in time. Her guests will understand. John would want us to go ahead with it. I know. Franny and I will take over all the arrangements and host the entire evening on your behalf, won't we, Franny? Thank you, Prudence. I feel so... Lydia! Lid oh my... Maid! What's her name? Maid! Lydia. Get her to bed. Okay? I'm going to call a doctor. Please, Lydia! Attend to her at once. You said the husband was fatally poisoned at breakfast. Well, that's one theory. Do you think Lydia could have been slipped something too? Headache, palpitations, vomiting, and you said she looked a little blotchy. Mm. Could be caused by anything. Including Aunt Prudence. Medicinal? As it comes. Thank you. And the old favourite's arsenic, of course, but half a grain of strychnine will do the trick. I found these in the bathroom cabinet. Hmm. Looks like a nerve powder. Usually prescribed for women, of course, for hysterical sex, for nervous exhaustion, emotional collapse, wandering wombs, that sort Why of thing. Why on earth would a womb wander? Unnatural behaviour will do it, according to Hippocrates. Like celibacy. Oh, good. Mine's not going anywhere. Excuse me. Uh, Dr. McMillan, the women's hospital telephoned. They need you urgently. Where's the patient, sister? I've put her in maternity. These two gentlemen picked her up in their cab. Good thing you came straight here by the sound of it. Will she be all right? Uh, no men in the wards. Thank you. Images trying to take away her troubles. She's just a child. Got herself into some grown up trouble, though. I'm sure Dr. McMillan will do her best. How much to the Windsor? Five shillings should do it. Nice try. I'm prepared to pay you two and six. You reckon it was that bloke we saw? What? There was someone with her? Just some dumb egg told to get shot of her. No, no, the other joker around the corner. He was a lofty beggar, around six foot, I reckon. And something flashed on his paw as he tugged his hat down, maybe a, a ring on his finger or something. Uh, forget the Windsor, we need the police. And I've just met a rather civilised detective. You and your strays. Lost cats, injured mongrels, and now it's fallen bloody women. Detective Inspector Jack Robinson, City South Police Station. Yeah, we know him. That's him. 
George Fletcher. Butcher George. It's the one. Miss Fisher. And if it isn't the Red Raggers, still fighting the capitalist menace? Your time will come. Oppressor of the widow and orphan. I hate to interrupt the class war, but who is Butcher George? George Fletcher was a doctor, once upon a time. But now we suspect he's behind a local abortion racket. If you know so much about him, why haven't you arrested him? If you delivered him tied up in brown paper and string, I still couldn't arrest him. The ones who die can't talk, and the ones who live won't talk. What's the penalty for procuring an abortion? 10 to 15 years, according to the book. Well, who's going to open their trap for that? Lennon made Soviet abortion illegal in 1920. I'm going back to the hospital. I wish I could change the laws for you, Miss Fisher. You can't? Fine. I'll just have to find a way around them. Good day, Inspector. Should I know you? My sister's ribbon. Miss Fisher. Is it still Miss? I'm deeply sorry I couldn't tell your family what you needed to know. Then tell me now. I have never confessed to the crime you want me to be guilty of. And my time here is nearly up. And here I am. I've come halfway around the world to make sure that you never get out of here alive. Death is only a torment for those who believe it is the end of all things. I'm not a child anymore, Mr. Foyle, so I won't play your lofty games. Whatever horrors you visited on her, I have imagined tenfold. And given the chance, I would do the same to you without smearing my lipstick. details about what happened they never do I either fell down the stairs or claimed to be completely mystified this one's not even offering her name no clues in her purse you don't have to save the world Franny. where are her things
would wholeheartedly recommend Miss Hartley. smuggled this upstairs. I recommend you swallow at least a bucket full. Oh, sorry, miss. Mm. You seem to be coping better than your maid. Aunt Prudence said you had to let the last one go. Oh, yes. It was unpleasant, but trivial. What trouble with the telephone, like this one? John caught her stealing the silver cruet set. I agreed he should dismiss her. Do you think she'd have any information about the household that might help the police? Unlikely. Alice was a timid thing and she went quietly enough. Drink up. technician. Very thoughtful. I do appreciate you weren't born to wealth. At least your mother came from good stock. It's just unfortunate she ran off with your father. Lucky then the Great War laid waste to his titled cousins. Yes. Well, no one likes the war. Do you think anyone here would want to harm Lydia or her husband? Don't be absurd. You're looking at the cream of Melbourne society. Oh, from Clementine's smile over there. She snaffled Lydia's upholsterer just when she needed him most. And Tilda Higginbottom by the punch as usual. But that one, she takes the biscuit. Practically runs a bordello. Hello there, Prudence. Madam Vida. Uh, may I present my niece, the Honourable Phryne Fish. How do you do? Madam Vida. Madam Breda has a little establishment at the far end of the city. A Turkish bath palace, Miss Fisher. How interesting. I'm a devoted patron of the London Hammam. You should try it, Aunt Prudence. <laughs> no, thank you, my dear. I shall remain all the cleaner for staying away. <laughs> Excuse me. Terrible news about John Andrews. I've been a loyal customer of his for years. What line of business was he in? Importing from the Orient. Cosmetics, Manchester. The most beautiful rugs. He adored Lydia. Though he had less time for her endless social events and her more colorful friends. Like who? Like the adorable Sasha Delice. Was that magnifique? Now I recall. I saw you dancing in Paris five years ago with your sister. <laughs> Death and the Maiden. It was primitive and spine-chilling. My sister, unfortunately, passed away some months ago. My condolences. I am still unused to dancing without her. <laughs> Do you tango, Miss Fisher? Ladies and gentlemen, Presenting Sasha Tennis.
We've been trying to reach Mrs. Andrews, but something seems to be wrong with your telephone. Excuse me, madam. Yes? The, the um, police need to speak with Mrs. Andrews again. Should I call her down? Poison? The coroner found traces of arsenic when he examined your husband, and your own symptoms seem to be consistent with a milder dose. Do you know where it came from? The sugar bowl with the breakfast tray was laced with rat poison. Oh. John always took so much sugar in his tea. Thank God I didn't finish my own. We've been informed your housemaid prepares the morning tray. That's correct. But... We'll need to ask Miss Williams a few questions the station. You don't seriously suspect this poor child of murder? Actually, I was studiously avoiding that term, Miss Fisher. If you find yourself in legal trouble, I know a clever woman who might help. Thank you, Miss. I can't imagine what grudge that poor girl could have against us. I hope we have the pleasure to meet again, Miss Fisher. I'm sure that can be arranged. Au revoir, monsieur. <laughs> Lydia seems calmer now. If only this awful poisoning business was resolved, she could busy herself with a week. Yes, that could cheer her up. My earrings. That man was far too charming. What's the hurry? My driver's on his way. I'll explain later. Good night, our prudence. At this hour, it's not safe. Why do you think you could just run off on your own? Because I'm carrying a gun. Friday! Sasha, pull more that you had the more mademoiselle help me. Good evening, gentlemen. Looking for a frolic. Yeah, they're looking for a fella. Seen a man running through here? No, but I've seen plenty lying down. Come on. This scrag's no use. Not much, darling. <sighs> Depends, sweetheart. Show us your tackle. Missed me. Oh, wonderful. 
You're not badly hurt. Though you may have ruined one of the most stunning gowns Melbourne will ever see. Why did you steal my earrings? To pay for cocaine. It's a dangerous habit. Are you going to be shot in the process? You should not assume it is my habit. My reasons were personal. So were my earrings. What did you say to the pharmacist? I asked to meet the King of Snow, the mastermind of the cocaine business in this town. Melbourne has certainly become more interesting in my absence. Life has been hard since we were forced from Russia. Too hard for my sister. She became addicted to cocaine and lost her way. She took her own life. How awful. Yeah, but Lydia was very good to both of us. But I gather her husband was not a ballet enthusiast. I never cared for John Andrews. <laughs> you think I was having a love affair with your friend. It is not true. She's too demure for my attentions. Whereas you... I'm so sorry, Miss Bishop, but I didn't know where else to go. I've been dismissed without a reference, and I think I need that clever woman you talked about. You better come in. <laughs> the, um... Matching Mary Jane's up there, if you're looking, miss. Thank you. My dance instructor was perfecting my développé. Now sit down, have some toast, tell me everything. The police asked me so many questions about Mr Andrews, it made me giddy. <laughs> about what kind of gentleman he was, what kind of boss, how he treated us household staff. And what did you tell them? Well, I couldn't lie. I'm a Catholic. I said he was all hands and tried to pin me against the range and have his way in the kitchen the night before he died. And I told them how he did the same to Alice and how she took off the morning they found him. Now I'm worried they're going to blame Alice as well. Was Alice in the family way to her employer? To John Andrews? I can't help you if you won't tell me the truth. It was a woman who helped me. Her name's Madame Breda. I've met her. And where did Madame Breda send you? I couldn't tell. The van had no windows. But uh, the door off the lane was green, I remember that. And when I came to, I could smell food. Like a bakery. She said he was a doctor. <gasps> Sorry, Miss Fisher. It was by the bath that I just... Not at all. Friday will do. <sighs> I washed and pressed your clothes and I mended those stockings for you. You have a very fine hand, Dot. 
It's my gift, Miss Franny. I had more trouble getting those blood stains off that lovely gown, though. <gasps> Genius. And I found this under the bed. Oh, thank you. A marvelous device invented by a thoroughly modern woman called Marie Stopes. Family planning. I could do with a maid. Though, uh, you'll probably want your old position back once this fuss has blown over and Mrs. Andrews is back to her old self. No, not for all the tea in China. Even without Mr. Andrews, there's still the electric iron to worry about. And the vacuum cleaner. And the new washing machine. Don't they save you labor? Yes, but at what cost, miss? My priest says it's unnatural putting electricity through wires. Sooner or later, it'll come in contact with the molten center of the earth and will blow up the whole world. Well, if you work for me, you'll have to answer the telephone promptly. And I might need you on occasion to bend the Ten Commandments. Um, like when? Today. And how important is the telephone? Extremely. Now, get your coat. We're off to the Turkish baths. Come in. Madam Brader, do you remember me? You're Lydia's maid, aren't you? I need your help. I know you helped Alison. Oh, not you too. John Andrews? Thank you for drawing me out of the house. I feel so much better here. It's hardly the bordello Aunt Prudence fears. Madame Breda has been one of John's best customers. Lydia, how much did you know about your husband's business dealings? Not enough. I've never had a head for figures. I may have to take over the reins all the same. Do you think the attempt on your lives could have something to do with a retaliation? After uh, falling out with a customer? I don't know what you mean. Could John have gotten mixed up in some business dealings you weren't aware of? Did he tell you everything? I loved John, Franny. His death has left me bereft. I'm not ready yet to pick over his parts. Of course not. No, just black for me. Of course. Here she comes. I had to miss my second pummeling, so I hope you've got something to report. She made me pay ten pounds and said to give this the doctor. She said not to open it and that I that I have to meet them on the corner of the laneway near Johnson's Hatters at seven in the morning wearing a red rose. Sounds risky. Well if someone hadn't done away with John Andrews it could have been me in that hospital. It's the very least I can do for Alice. Now all we need the red rose. Packaged exactly the same way as the Patterson's powders I souvenir from Lydia's bathroom. Well, the pink's only a vegetable dye with a nerve powder. It's most likely a narcotic base like opium or a stimulant like cocaine. Is it legal like that? Not from a Turkish bathhouse. You need a doctor's prescription. If Madame Breda's using it to pay off unsavory types, then my bet is cocaine. Definitely cocaine. I'm the doctor. Just to make sure. What has all this to do with butcher George and backyard abortions? I'm not sure yet, Mac, but I think it's time somebody found out. Yes. 
little bit of ruddy head start, all right. Remind me to buy you a new taxi when this is over. Eureka! Dr. George. I'll be relieving you of your little burden. Let's lie down good and quiet. Hmm? Damn it. Where the hell have they gone? Let's see how far gone you are. No! Easy! I'm not far gone. I'm not even gone at all. What's your caper? It's got to be close. Over here. I'll take this side. Sid! <laughs> Give us a hand. Get away from me. This will calm her down. Away from that girl, both of you. Hands toward heaven. Up, you idiot. So you're the animal who took the knife to Alice Hartley. Says, what have you got to say to this man? My sentiments exactly. Now all we need is some brown paper and string and these two gentlemen can deliver you to the police. But first, you're going to tell me exactly how you know Madame Breda. Won't Alice still have to confess? Don't worry, Dot. Cecil helped her tell the police that she paid Butcher George the money and then changed her mind. But he wouldn't listen. Is that what happened? More or less. That was the most perilous day of my entire life. Even worse than being a murder suspect. But the cocoa helps. I'm glad about that, Dot. Because you need to be brave a little longer. Why? You'll be safe enough here. But if I don't return by midnight, you might have to call the police. On the telephone? I'm afraid so. Cheerio. Now there's a familiar figure. You sure about that bloke? Yeah. Not entirely. French-Russian extraction. We've only met socially. I'm definitely not sure about those two. Bastard extraction. We've only met up a dark alley. They're going into Madame Bradus. Up. 
Is that all I can do for you? You might go for help. Things could get interesting around here. I thought they already were. your luck. Get back here! We met the night we shot this Dago in the alley. She knows nothing. Let her go and do what you like with me. I paid to speak with your boss. Have you no honor? Don't worry, mate. You'll get your chat with the king. <laughs> <laughs> so what will you do when you meet him? Kill him. Unless somebody's already beaten you to it. What do you mean? The drugs are coming in through JA Imports. It's John Andrews' company. So that is what amused those thugs. That I would meet the king in the afterlife. Lydia? They told me he had a floozy. I didn't think it would be you. But how? Lydia poisoned her husband after he had his way with her maid. It wasn't just his philandering. Of course not. I know you better than that. And Madame Breda sorted the pregnancy like she sorted all your other grubby business. You helped us. We danced for all your friends. Why did you do it? Not all of us did so well out of the war, Franny. You inherited a title. But my family lost everything. And then I met John, and he was wealthy and charming. Far too charming. And in the end, a hopeless businessman and an utter embarrassment. I rescued us from bankruptcy and disgrace. And I built an empire. All I wanted was my own life back. But John wouldn't let me have it. Judge me if you like. But I saved myself. What a shame it took a life of crime for you to find your strength, Lydia. Haven't you become a dreary crusader? I'm sure your demise will fix that. Strip them. Last in here. What longer if you stay calm?
Miss Fisher needs you down at the Turkish bars in Little Lonsdale. I hope she's comfortable. She could be waiting a long time. Sasha. Sasha, don't fall asleep. I told you. Koki and the bull. They dragged off this Russian Dago and she went after him. Some combo friend of yours, was he? Funny. My eyes could focus in this fog. James piped in. We just need to pipe it out again. City South Police Station, Constable Collins speaking. Yep. Inspector! Sir, uh, it's Miss Williams on the telephone. She said Miss Fisher's in some kind of trouble. Okay, you two, take the front and side entrances. I'll take the rear with Collins and Foster. All right, let's break down this door. Let's go. Sasha. Sasha, don't fall asleep. Wake up. Glad you could make it, Inspector. I'm a little more steamed up than I wanted to be. Always wondered what went on in a Turkish bathhouse. Come on, then. Oh, tell me how clever you are. Now, what made you think Lydia Andrews was the murderer? Well, first thing, she kept declaring her love for John Andrews when we all knew he was a cad. And put that down to marital delusion. Then when she protested that she had no head for business, though so she raised thousands of pounds for the hospital fund, I tried to put that down as false modesty. And even when she accused Alice of stealing the cruet set, though I'd read her glowing reference, I had hoped it was her husband's lie. Of course, the other suspects helped. There was Madame Breda, but she was too obvious. And she pointed the finger at Sasha Delis. So I was forced to discount him as Lydia's jealous lover with my own thorough investigation. Sorry. Where was I? Oh, the tea. That's what really bothered me. She drank just enough sweetened tea to remove suspicion, poisoning herself, when I know she always took her tea without sugar. Must get a wriggle on, miss, or you'll be late for Premier Hogan. Just a polite chat about the criminal justice system. Please, about the job. 
I don't know what my priest will think of your guns and knives and dancing. Considering your last employers were a drug baroness and a rapist, surely you'd find me a modest improvement. Says, Bert, how lovely. Sit down and have some champagne. Inspector Robinson and Constable Collins, what a lovely surprise. Your handbag, Miss Fisher. And when you're fully hydrated, I'd like a private word. Thank you. But feel free amongst my private friends. We're celebrating. Five minutes after your timely escape from the Turkish bath palace, the steam room exploded in a ball of flames due to a backup in the pipes, resulting in an inferno attended by every fire truck in the metropolitan area. Luckily, there were no fatalities. One less bordello? This is not a game, Miss Fisher. Of course not. Now raise a glass to my new business. What kind of business? To my oldest friend's newest enterprise, the Honourable Miss Fisher, Lady Detective. I do like the sound of that. 